everybody, it's Lisa and Jessica from the Balanced Real Estate Team in Prescott, Arizona. And today we're coming to you from Jessica's rental that she's been working on for what, two months now? Uh, six weeks actually. Yeah, and it's finally finished. It looks great. So we wanted to show you a little bit about that today. Remember, if you're looking to purchase in the Prescott area, we can be your real estate team. We really appreciate it. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button because it helps everyone who's looking for this type of information about Prescott find it more easily. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button because it notifies you every time a new video is posted. So let's get going. Jess, tell us about your um, investing history and what you've done throughout your career. Well, I kind of started by default. I bought my first house at 22. I was actually looking for an apartment at 21 and moved back to Arizona from Washington. And I was talking to a few people around work and one of them had said, why don't you buy a house? And I thought, well, that just doesn't seem possible. I'm 21, mm -hmm. I don't really have credit. She thought she was too young. You're never I, too young to buy a house. I didn't have money saved. I didn't really have any of the things I thought I needed to get a home. Uh, so I actually, I had a lot of family in the real estate business. My grandmother was a real estate broker and a longtime escrow officer. My mother was an escrow officer at the time. And my stepfather at the time was a lender. So kind of had this team of people around me. I started talking to them and we discussed different programs. I was able to get in with a FHA loan. It was a program that isn't available any longer. There are still some wonderful down payment assistant programs. This particular program allowed the seller to um, gift me my down payment. Uh, so at the time, it was 2004, houses were climbing like crazy. Um, everything was just going on and off the market. I kept missing out. And finally, we were able to write an offer on a home above asking and ask for those concessions we needed in the purchase price. So they still got what they wanted and I got what I needed. And if you don't remember, home. 2003, 2004, and 2005 were the time when home prices were escalating, kind of like we just saw mm -hmm. in the pandemic years, but yeah. not as much. So she was buying probably at the height of the market, wouldn't you say? I know. Uh, no, it was probably Still, two, two years prior, two okay. and a half years prior to the height of the market. It was actually just kind of, it felt more like the beginning of it. Like no one really knew it was going to take off like it did mm -hmm. for the years of 2004, 2005, 2006. Then, you know, and yeah, 2006 and then the crazy. is a mess and we'll get to that. But, you know, I was able to get my offer accepted. I actually bought my first house side on the so that was kind of crazy. Um, I did get to go see it and do an inspection after my offer got accepted. But after having so many offers not get in in time or just not get accepted because there were multiple offers by the time I made my offer. I had looked at a couple of units in the um, complex. It was a townhome. So I knew what the home would kind of look like on the inside. Came on the market within 45 minutes. I made my offer and we had it under contract wow. in the, by the end of the day. Wow. Uh, ended up working out. But a few years later, um, I found myself getting married, having a kid. Uh, it just wasn't going to work for our family, so I moved out, and I found myself being a landlord at 24 years old, so that was how I kind of got my That's a lot of responsibility. Start. It wasn't a good time to sell for a number of years after that. Uh, the market, as you know, crashed. I hung on to the house. I was able to fix it up and make a profit off of it in the long run. Uh, by hanging on to it, I kept good credit. I was able to buy another house for my family during um, the recession when houses were, you know, 50% off or so. <laughs> so I was very fortunate that I was able to obtain a house in Phoenix for, gosh, I think it was uh, $114,000 wow. for a three bedroom, two bathroom house in a pretty nice neighborhood with wow. a two car garage. And between those two purchases, it really kind of got me going into it. Mm -hmm. um, gave me a little confidence that even if you, you know, it, it might seem like in the time you made a bad purchase because maybe the market switches on you really quick and you mm -hmm. just don't know what's going to come of the future. 
but over time, if you just keep diligent and you remind yourself that, you know, whether you're negative or positive equity at the time, what really matters is can you make the payment? Can you mm -hmm. keep keep it going until it is a positive asset for you because it is a long-term investment real estate always it is you know yeah. next year it could crash or could keep going the way it's been going which is kind of a flat line mm -hmm. um but over the next five or ten years my belief is that by having multiple homes i can grow my wealth uh, just by doing that. If you have one home, that's great. You're going to grow your wealth and gauge yourself against inflation because that's like the number one thing that got me going and got me thinking about it was read an article and it had said something about, um, you know, every year your rent's going to go up with inflation. You secure a mortgage for 30 years, you have the same payment for 30 years. And in 30 years, 30 years ago, a mortgage payment was quite a bit less than now. Yeah, two years ago was quite yeah. a bit less than now, I'll be honest. But if you think about it that way, wherever you are in time, it's really not going to probably get much cheaper. And if it does, it's only momentarily. You might get a yeah. momentary gain. Yeah. But you don't know until you've gone through it. If you're always waiting for the better deal, you just don't know. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that's my experience. It's taught me that... To, to be successful, you have to be long-term. You can't get too caught up and in your head in the moment about what the market's doing. You can't get on YouTube and read that the world's burning down every day yeah. um, and relate that to your life and think that your life is burning down. The truth is you have a physical asset in real estate. People are always going to need a place to live and costs are always going to mm -hmm. go up. Mm -hmm. And that's the bottom line. So anyway, that's yeah. my, my story. That's awesome. <laughs> So today we're at, if you've watched our previous videos, you've seen us at this particular rental and the steps that Jess has taken to get it to rentable yeah. condition, I guess yeah. we should say. They did a lot of work. This place looks awesome. We're going to run a video right now and um, show it to you and uh, we'll catch up with you later. Thanks for tuning in. We always appreciate you watching our videos. If you need help with real estate, go to our website, www.prescottrealestateandliving.com. Contact us, text us, email us, do whatever you have to do to get a hold of us, and we will answer any questions that you have. Here we go. Okay, everybody, we're walking into Jess's newest real estate investment. So when we got this house, it needed some new flooring. Uh, we pulled up the flooring. That was a chore. Uh, don't don't liquid nails flooring to the ground. Just an FYI. Uh, and there are some cabinets here, and um, just some some stuff they had stuck up on the wall. We had to fix a bunch of old, dated, dusty window treatments we got rid of. Yeah, you guys have to watch the previous videos. It's quite a change with the yeah. the new flooring and the stuff that, the old plastic flooring that he glued to the ground and the cabinets that were here. Yeah. And then, yeah, we, we put in new baseboards. I think there were... Oh yeah, five or six different yeah. types of yeah, baseboards? Yeah, I think two or three, and there were missing baseboards in areas. So we got one good kind, we, we went a little more modern, brought them up a bit. We changed out the, the light and sound fixtures, put in new light bulbs in the kitchen so they all match and look nice. Uh, we did granite, we lowered the bar, so now it's a breakfast bar. Uh, adding a lot more visual space to this area. Yeah, this is a huge change. Again, watch the past videos because there was a very, there was a high bar that didn't have much counter space, and now it will seat, what, five people at this bar? It could possibly, yeah. And very lots of prep space. Yeah. Huge difference. Added a few new appliances. Yeah. Uh, the appliances that were still working, new sink. We went with um, mm. the the single. Yep, deep, deep single sink. stainless. Yeah. Really nice black fixtures here. Just set the tone for the whole kitchen. 
Yeah, we changed out all the door handles and hinges to yep. update everything a little bit. Um, what else can we do? Fan oh, this is the master, course. that's right. Okay. Lots of cleaning. We put all new smoke detectors in. And if you remember this, this was all where those white cabinets were, like tons and tons of them. So they got rid of those. We did the uh, granite remaster yeah. to match the kitchen. Really just kind of cleaned really up nice. in here. We got rid of a lot of shelving. Um, I just actually spray painted that to match the wow. faucets. It's, I've done it a few times before. It's not great to do it on door handles or stuff that gets touched a lot, but no one's going to be up there on yeah. a regular basis. So that looks great. South good for that. Um, if you look in the master closet, we have oh, a lot yeah. of cabinets and we were able to reuse those. I think they're just going to add a lot of space. For yeah, the that looks so good. It, you know, they don't have to have an extra dresser out in the, the master. Right. So again, referring to old videos, you saw some of these cabinets that were in the master and there were, I don't know how many, 10 of them, maybe? Uh, no, there were, right. so there were two more of these and okay. then there were four above them. Uh, so they're all separate units. So I guess there were 12 units in there okay. individually. So she moved some in here. So there's a lot more storage in this closet now. That makes a big difference. Big yeah, difference. we thought that would be very nice for whomever moves in. Nice and light in here too. Getting rid of what <laughs> was here and then then cleaning it up, painting and adding some new updated fixtures. Yeah, and this room had they um, left furniture in here, correct? Yeah, there was and then furniture and up here there were shelving. Yeah, and I yeah. think up here there was shelving, all that's gone, it's all repainted. They have built shelves in all the closets too, all the yeah. way up to the ceilings. So nice fixtures the everywhere. Yeah. Upgraded the bathroom a little bit with a nice countertop. Yeah. And again, some nice fixtures. Wow, really good, really nice. Yeah. It turned out very good. What was in here? Same thing, shelving. Oh, Lots shelving. shelving, okay. There were some more cabinets in here. That had a desk okay. and some bookshelves. This one had some cabinets. So Jess put some nice curtains up so there's a little bit of privacy. Yeah. Yeah, those, the bedroom's got the blackout curtains so that, you know, when people are sleeping, they don't bother. Yeah. Lights. Laundry room redone, no more stained wet floor. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, there's some, some wow. interesting things in here. Um, you know, oh yeah, the backyard. We had an electrician, <laughs> electrician come and do some work because of, there were just so many weird electrical things, you know. Um, we didn't do as much out here. We did have someone come and help, um, mainly out front, but they did some work trimming everything down, getting yeah. it ready for the winter. Looks so much better. Um, the weeds are gone, the cabinets are gone, and I repainted the whole side of the house. Oh, wow. So it looks nice and fresh again. Again, once again, if you remember, there That's were cabinets lining cabinets. this wall. But yeah, all the, all the cabinets are gone, repainted um, to make it match the rest of the house. Uh, there were, we sealed up some holes and such down here. Yeah, so the critters wouldn't get in. But Looks good. So we're gonna go to the front yard now. There was kind of a lot of cleanup that needed to be done here, so yeah. we'll take a look. Yeah, yeah. they took out all the cactus. Oh um, yeah. Which is very nice. <laughs> um, 
there was something weird he built around this window and we got rid of that fixed some of the texture and painted around it because it, the water was being held up against the stucco oh like yeah that. we had someone come out and fix the grating here we got rid of there were some blocks here and the planter up against the house you never oh, right. that. <laughs> yep uh they had buried some like pots. pots yeah pots and then they had this weird plastic chain coming down here it wasn't done correctly it was ruining the stucco so we fixed that we still have to paint it but this will divert the water out away from the house instead of it was all hitting this and going here and then landing right by the house which is not right long. never good to have water up against the house so we did a lot of work in, in just cleaning it making it nice um even the garage paint. is beautiful now <laughs> yeah yeah i just finished painting the garage so really nice mm -hmm. Well, thanks, Jess. It's been it's been really cool to see what you've done, and hope uh -huh. everybody at home has enjoyed it. We'll check in with you later. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.